Yo guys, welcome to the Zelda Fiction. Today we are gonna see, what if Naruto got harem with Kami and Shinigami. Part 1. Huge shout out to aspiring writer 17 for this story. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Naruto Uzumaki, a boy no older than 11 years old, was in his second year of the Kanoha Shinobi Academy. He was currently being chased by a mob of civilians and a few shinobi. He ran into an alleyway and quickly hid under a pile of trash. When the mob had passed, he came out and quickly did something that most everybody thought he couldn't. He hinged into a very plain-looking man and walked out of the alleyway. He carried on towards his apartment and when he got there, he dropped his hinge and went to bed. Now, well most people knew him as the stupid kid in the back of the class who couldn't preform the most simple of hinges, no one knew him as he actually was. Naruto Uzumaki is incredibly clever. He could be shown something once and be able to do it repeatedly and never forget it. This is, in part, due to his photographic memory. How else would he be able to create his more sophisticated pranks, like his paint bombs in the Hyuga Manor which he set to go off at exactly 11.30 on Saturday morning, when almost all of the main family did their laundry. The only reason he doesn't show it in his academics is because the academy is a joke. Civilians, who only wanted to act cool and learn cool jutsu, could pass with flying colors, as long as they read their textbooks and knew who the previous Hokage were. Honestly, how long did the teachers think these little kids were gonna last in the outside world? Anyway, he could do a lot more than what most people thought. He had incredible chakra control, which was saying a lot for his massive chakra reserves. He had pinpoint accuracy with any weapon, kunai, shuriken, bow and arrow, javelin, anything. With his photographic memory and his dead-eye accuracy, it's no wonder he was exceptional at few ninjutsu or sealing techniques. His favorite, by far, would be ninjutsu. He could do the three academy jutsu, shadow clone jutsu, a number of elemental jutsu including the rikiri, although he had perfected it into his own assassination technique, better than the one he had seen a gray-haired jonin preform. For one, his was quiet and didn't require hand seals to preform. He could also preform the Rasengan and mix any of his three elemental affinities into it, fire, lightning, and wind, again, from the gray-haired jonin. He really should thank that guy someday. He trained himself into the ground every chance he could in every aspect of being a shinobi. He was a master at Fuinjutsu, Ninjutsu, Kinjutsu, Tujutsu with his own style, which was derived from the Hyuga's gentle fist and the Ichiha's interceptor style. He was exceptional at gain jutsu and stealth, as well as jutsu creation. Back to the present, Naruto was getting into bed and almost immediately fell asleep. In the seal. Naruto opened his eyes to see the roof of his apartment. He was about to try and go back to sleep when he noticed something weird. Going towards the window, he opened the blinds to see a black moon with a white sky looming over the village of Kanoha. Just then he heard a roar of epic proportions. He started to run towards where he heard the roar to find a giant fox behind an equally massive cage. So, my jailer has finally chosen to show himself to me. To what do I owe the pleasure? The massive fox said. You be, why am I here? Naruto questioned. Well aren't you quick. You're here because I wanted some entertainment. I've been locked up here for 11 years and now I'm sick of it. I will grant you five wishes at the cost of my tails, in order for you to create a link between me and your senses. This will allow you to create devastation in your world and allow me to see it. QP explained. What's the catch? Naruto asked skeptically. It'll be a painful process and you will gain a massive influx of chakra, throwing your chakra control to S. Are there any limitations? I'm the king of demons. You really think I would follow any limitations even if there was any? QP laughed. I accept. How do we do this? Simple, you tell me your wishes, I sacrifice my tails, we wreak havoc. Okay, first wish. I wish to have the ability to control time to my whim. That means pause, play, fast forward, rewind, and even send stuff into the future and past. Naruto said with a couple minutes of thought. Very well. After a couple of seconds of silence, a bright silver light erupted from QB's body and encompassed Naruto. A minute or two later, Naruto appeared from the light with a couple streaks of silver in his hair. I didn't feel any pain. Naruto stated questionably. I'm blocking it until we're done and Yara asleep, so most of it will be lost because Yara already unconscious. Ah, well wish number two. I wish I had a Dejutsu that combines or even trumps the power of the Sharingan, by Akukan, and even the Rinnegan that I read the Sage of Six Paths had. It should be able to let me see all kinds of chakra, copy any Jutsu and bloodlines, and let me have the ultimate game Jutsu that is unbreakable. Smart, this should cause great entertainment. Within an instant, another light, this time red, came from the king of the demons and covered Naruto's eyes in the light. After a couple of seconds of blindness for Naruto, the light faded and showed Naruto's new eyes. 
His new Dejutsu had the appearance of three concentric rings with nine Tomo in total laying on the rings. It also had a blue background with a white snowflake-like shape under the pupil. Rin Sharingan with Tensigan background. The Aurinu Dejutsu has the abilities of the Eternal Manjiku Sharingan, which has the Susanu, Amaterasu, and Tsukiyomi, along with the capabilities of the Rinnegan, which grants you all five elemental affinities, along with the ability to manipulate gravity without the need of hand signs, along with the six paths of pain, Diva equals gravity, Asura equals manipulate, and mechanize your body. Human equals read the minds of people and can rip the soul out of anybody, animal equals summon any animal, Prita equals absorb any kind of chakra through your hands, and Naraka equals summon the king of hell to interrogate or restore any living being. You also get the abilities of the Tensigan, an upgraded version of the Byakugan. This allows you to gain the Tensigan chakra mode, greater gravity control, better speed, power, strength, durability, and reflexes, as well as truth-seeking balls. As well as all of the powers you asked for. QP explained. Well damn. Thank you. Naruto said in awe. Yay, yay, next wish. Okay, I wish I could change my appearance at will. That means I can change my molecular structure to make me look like anyone or anything I want and even create new parts at will. Done. QB said after a brown light engulf Naruto. Okay, I wish I could reanimate dead people to fight with me, as if they were in their prime with no negative side effects on my part and without the need for a sacrifice. But give me a way to control them if they get out of hand. Cool, that'll cause some chaos. Just then a black light engulfed Naruto before the symbol for death appeared on his right hand before disappearing. I wish I could gain the abilities of some of the manga that I've read such as Bleach, One Piece, Tokyo Ghoul, and Deadman Wonderland. Pandu. A rainbow-colored stream of light entered Naruto's chest before he blacked out. He actually lasted longer than I thought. I figured it would take more than one session. And with that, Naruto went through his most painful sleep of his life, but it would be one that he would never regret. Naruto woke up to the blinding light of the sun coming through his crappy blinds. Wa well, what's going on? Naruto asked groggily. Ah you've finally awoken. You've missed two days of the academy. Ah, QB. So it wasn't a dream. I doubt anyone missed me anyway. Naruto concurred. Yay, yay. So what is your first plan of action with your new power? QP asked. Well first of all just then Naruto snapped his fingers and everything stopped. Birds stopped chirping, wind stopped blowing, and people stopped moving. All except Naruto that is. There, now, how do I reanimate dead people and is there a limit on who I can resurrect? Naruto asked, acting as if stopping time itself was just another everyday thing. No, you don't have any limitations. You activate it by thinking of the people you want to bring back and throw your hands on the ground, as if doing a summoning. Although I would refrain from summoning more than 10 people at a time. Got it. Thank you QP I will do that at the training grounds. Don't mention it. Zero seconds later. Okay let's do this. Naruto then threw his hands on the ground, and a big poof of smoke appeared. Out of the smoke came seven figures. After a few seconds, the smoke cleared and Naruto, and in turn QB, recognized the figures as Minato Namikaze, Kishina Uzumaki, Hashirama Senju, Taburama Senju, Mito Uzumaki, Madara Chiha, and Hanzo of the Salamander. What is going on? Hashirama asked. Aha, this was my plan all along Hashirama. Now, I will absorb the ten tails and usher in a new age of peace. Madara yelled while cackling, before noticing where he was. Wait, what's going on? Everyone just face palmed. I will be able to answer any questions you have. Everyone turned to see a small blonde haired boy by the age of 11 or 12. Only Minato and Kishina seemed to know who this boy was. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, and I have summoned you all from the dead because you are all renowned shinobi. I want you all to train me and make me stronger than any other shibobi that has ever lived. Naruto explained. You just expect us to teach you our prize techniques just because you used my re jutsu to bring us back? Taburama asked. First of all, I didn't use any jutsu of yours to bring you all back. Secondly, I don't expect you to teach me just because I brought you back. I expect you to teach me because you have no other option. Naruto said, coldly. Why you little whatever Madara was going to say was cut off when Naruto showed them his dejutsu. What is that? This is my sharingan tensigan Rinnegan combination. I have all of the powers of the Rinnegan and Sharingan and upgraded by Akugan. Naruto explained calmly. That's impossible. How did you acquire such power? Madara demanded. I made a deal with the QP inside me. Which reminds me. With that, Naruto rushed Minato and put his hand on his stomach. The other half of QP's chakra flowed into Naruto's seal. There you go QP. As thank you for all you've done. Naruto said sincerely. Naruto, thank you. And call me Kurama. The newly named Kurama told his jailer. Think nothing of it Kurama. Naruto, why would you do that? 
Minato asked. First of all, I did that to complete my friend. Why do you need to know? Having all of the QB inside one seal can put the seal under too much stress. Mito said. Don't worry, he's not going to try and escape. And even if he did, he would just have to ask and I'd let him out. Anyway, we've gotten too off track. We have all the time in the world for you to train me. We will work 24-7 in order for me to gain as much power as possible. I guess it would feel pretty good to train someone who can rival a god. Hashirama stated. Yay, I was going to kill Abito anyway. Might as well ally myself with the winning side. Madara said. After that, everyone agreed. Then it settled, we will train with shadow clones 24-7 with small breaks to regain our chakra. We will train until I think that I'm ready to face the elemental nations. Naruto stated. What would be 10 years later? Naruto could easily say that after 10 years of training non-stop with shadow clones, had made him able to fight all of the tailed beasts at the same time, with only losing one-eighth of his chakra, as long as he wasn't using his dejutsu or time manipulation. Over the years he had resurrected a couple other people you might know. Such as Shisui Ichiha, Makoto Ichiha, and even the Sage of Six Paths himself, Hagoromo Atsusuki. The Ichiha trio had trained him in the Sharingan, Genjutsu, and Tejutsu. Shisui trained him in speed, while Madara trained him in his eternal Manjiku Sharingan. Minato trained him in time-space Jutsu and his Horation. Kishina trained him in Kinjutsu and Chakra manipulation, like her Chakra chains. He found out that they were his parents about an hour after that first meeting. Mido trained him in sealing, seeing as how she was a master, even by Uzumaki standards and manners. Hashirama taught him how to control his wood-release bloodline and taught him how to mix more elements. Habarama taught him advanced chakra control exercises, advanced water manipulation, and how to control his emotions. Hanzo of the Salamander taught him all about poisons and how to apply them in combat, as well as being immune to them all. He also taught him how to wield a scythe. Agaromo taught him how to control his Rinnegan, as well as give Naruto both of his marks. The marks Naruto and Sasuke have on their hands which represent both sides of the sage's power, he also told him a bit about his Tensigan, but was unable to teach him much because that was after his time. After he decided he was ready, he gave everyone a choice. They could stay with him and help him take over the nations, or they can go back to the afterlife and spend the rest of eternity however they wanted. Minato was unable to stay as he promised the Shinigami that he would go back when he was done training his son, and Inami Kazi never goes back on his word. Ashirama, Taburama, Mido, Hanzo, and the sage wanted to pass on as well as they thought that the world was in good hands. Ishina, Mikoto, Madara and Shisui decided to stay as they had unfinished business in the world of the living. That was the point where Naruto felt the need to let time play again. But not before letting the villagers know that he was not to be tucked with anymore. Time start. The villagers were just walking around the village, going about their own business when all of a sudden, every single shop that had ever wronged Naruto in any way, was completely ransacked. Buildings destroyed, produce stolen, and graffiti on the walls that were still standing. But one section of graffiti caught every single villager's eye. Some, the ones who were relatively nice to our blonde-haired hero, could only smile and wonder how much more interesting life was gonna be from now on. Because someone wrote two words on the Hokage monument in bright red paint. Two words that sent the villagers who openly abused Naruto into a shivering fit. Those two words were simply, payback time. Aruka Yamino, a Chuanin who spent his career teaching academy students at the Kanohe Shinobi Academy, was getting incredibly annoyed. His students were talking non-stop. These were supposed to be the next generation of killers, and they couldn't even quiet down when the teacher came into the room. He was just about about to scream at the top of his lungs when the door opened, and in came a boy with dirty blonde hair with red and black streaks in it. He wore a dark red button-up shirt with the sleeves rolled up a black vest, black dress pants, black combat shoes, a black tie, and a black fedora, with a grey line on the top of the rim that blocked the boy's eyes. Excuse me for being late, I had better things to do with my morning than getting up early and coming here to learn nothing of use. The boy said. I'm sorry, I didn't know we were getting a new student today. Hiruka said curiously. I'm not new. At that moment, the boy lifted his fedora a little to show his striking blue eyes with flecks of silver. Naruto Aruka exclaimed loudly. In the flesh. Now, let's get this show on the road. Naruto said with a smirk. Naruto Baka. Stop trying to show up Sasuke-kun. You're just she was suddenly cut off when she found duct tape over her mouth and Naruto in his seat at the back of the class next to the window. Well what did you do, Naruto? Haruka questioned. I did what someone should have done a long time ago, myself included. Now, on to class. Um, okay. Now, back to the lesson. Who here can tell me what a Kekai Jinkai is? Sasuke was the first to raise his hand. 
A Kekai Genkai is a bloodline limit that grants a person and their clan and offspring a special ability. Such as my clan Sharingan. He finished beepily. Yep, a clan of copycats that don't do any work on their own. Save for a few, like Shisui. Makoto, Madara, and your brother, Itachi. The others were just arrogant copycats. Naruto stated matter-of-factly. How dare you, you clanless loser. You have no right to degrade my clan of elites when you're just a dope who can't didn't even know his four of a mother and bastard of a father. Sasuke yelled angrily and beepily. Actually, I can tell you exactly who my mother and father was. And let me tell you this, you will most likely feel very stupid. Naruto said with a smirk. Oh yay. Well, who were they? Sasuke stated arrogantly, thinking his parents were nobodies. Well, my father was Minato Namekiz, 4th Hokage and Yellow Flash of the Leaf. My mother on the other hand just then a redeated woman appeared next to Naruto. Is Kashina Yuzumaki, Kano has Red Death and the Kanjustu Master of the Leaf, one who could take on all of the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist at the same time. Naruto says with a smirk. His eyes not having been opened the entire time. Hello, as he said, I am Kashina Yuzumaki, Naruto's mother. Kashina said with a smirk identical to Naruto's. Okay, you can leave now. Saratobi's probably gonna want a meeting now. Naruto said. Gotcha, see you at home. Kashina said with a smile before she disappeared. Now, I'm gonna leave, because I already know all of this. Tuck you all, except Aruka, and goodbye. And then he just wasn't there anymore. No jutsu or anything, just gone. Um, okay then. You guys can go to lunch now. Haruka said, still in shock at the fact that his surrogate aunt was his surrogate little brother's mom. With Naruto. Naruto was just walking around after letting time flow again. Just then, four Anbu appeared around him. Naruto Uzumaki, you are required to appear before the then he realized that the boy was no longer there. Hokage. Okay, I'll go see the old monkey. Naruto said before stopping time again and going to the Hokage's office. He started time again and saw Sirotobi's reaction to him just appearing in his office. Naruto, how did you get here? Sirotobi questioned just before his Anbu appeared in the office. What took you so long? Naruto questioned with a smirk. Why brat? Respect your superiors. The Inumasked Anbu said. I will if I ever meet any, dog breath. Naruto said with his ever-present smirk on his face. Why you? Quiet. Sirotobi demanded. Now, Naruto-kun explain yourself. He said seriously. All you need to know is that I'm stronger than ever and that I won't be taking any more shut from anyone. And don't ever call me Naruto-kun again, you lost that right when you decided to let me get beaten by the villagers. Naruto said, coldly. Now, you have to understand, I had no choice. Had I helped you or punished the villagers, the council would have had my head for showing favoritism. Saratobi complained. It just means you are a coward for being scared of your subordinates. You've lost even more of my respect. Now, goodbye. I hope you think about what I've said and change. And then, he was gone. Anbu, please give me a moment alone. After all of his Anbu left the room, Saratobi set up privacy seals around the room. Saratobi's face contorted into rage. That little demon dares to try and lecture me. I'll have to get him back under control. Otherwise, I'll just have Danzo place a loyalty seal on him and put him in route. Saratobi schemed evilly. End of Academy. It was the last day of the Academy, and the only people who looked like they had improved in even the slightest amount were Sasuke, Hinata, and Shikamaru. The rest just seemed content being weak. Especially Sakura and the other civilians. Naruto, on the other hand, just seemed to continue to grow in power. In the past years he had revived even more people to help him train including Indra and Ashura Atsusuki, Hamura's children. The weird thing was that he could also revive people from manga that he's read to train him and his powers. Those included, Ichigo Kurosaki, Gen Yusai Yamamoto, Edward Newgate, Kaido of the Beasts, Kanaki Ken, Taka Kirishima, Ganta Igarashi, and Shiro. The only ones who wanted to stay with him were Shiro and Taka. So he trained and trained and trained. But, he also continued with his payback. People, and even the Hokage himself, were pranked on a daily basis, from paint bombs to destruction of property, depending on their involvement in his suffering. Anyway, back to the academy. They were just about to start the genin exam. They were just about to start the written portion. Not much to report about that, besides Naruto finished as soon as they said start. Nobody knew how he did it, even Aruka and the Hokage who was watching him through his crystal ball. Then, they went outside to take the Tajutsu portion. Almost all of the civilian-born students failed due to being put against clan heirs. Sasuke seethed when he didn't get to fight Naruto. He was so mad that when it was his fight, he brutally beat his opponent. Sasuke was then deducted points for his brutality. Something that resulted in the screaming of his fangirls. 
His face was almost as funny as when Aruka gave them a chakra capacity test to see who needed to work on building their chakra up and who needed to work on controlling their chakra. Naruto completely destroyed the machine and a large chunk of the wall when the doctor told him to not hold back. The look on Sasuke's face was priceless. Anyway, Naruto was put against a girl who moved here from Iowa. Her name was Yukatora Hako. She wore a white battle kimono over black shorts, a black tank top, and black combat boots. She moved during their first at the academy. As such, she was never bitter towards him. She even tried to help him on some occasions before he got his powers. So, he decided to take it easy on her. They started with basic academy to jutsu. But, after a couple of minutes, nobody had gotten hit, mostly because Naruto was only dodging and Yukatora was getting frustrated. Why can't I hit you? Yukatora yelled. I will admit, you are good. But, you get sloppy when you're frustrated. Naruto said sagely. At that, she stopped, took a deep breath, and took a unique battle stance. This got Naruto to raise his eyebrow in surprise. Thank you for the advice. Now, prepare yourself. At this, she rushed at Naruto. You can admit when you're wrong, I like that. That's an admiral trait. I'll be lucky if I can get on the same team as someone as level-headed as you. Naruto said sincerely, which caused her to blush a bit. They continued to fight for the remainder of the time limit, Naruto now having to block some punches and kicks. When the bell sounded, signaling the end of the fight, Haruka gave them both perfect scores. Next was the accuracy exam. They were to throw five kunai and five shuriken at targets from a distance of 20 feet. Again, most civilians failed. All of the clan heirs passed with Naruto getting a perfect for throwing them at the same time and destroying the targets. After that was the ninjutsu portion. At this, almost everyone passed due to the low chakra exertion required for the academy jutsu. Sasuke, being the arrogant fasshole he was, decided to show off by doing the fire style. Grand fireball jutsu after the three academy jutsu. He walked back to his seat with a beepy smirk on his face, thinking he outperformed Naruto. Next was Naruto's turn. Deciding to show off a little, he did all of the academy jutsu without hand seals, then preformed a sealess wind style. Great breakthrough. This got him a perfect score. Next was Ino Yamanaka. Wanting to impress her Sasuke kun, she did her clan's mind transfer technique on Naruto to try and embarrass him. Instead, she just started screaming and fell to the ground. Next time you try something like that, the next thing you see will scar you for life. Naruto said with his eyes still closed, as if he wasn't phased in the least by the Yamanaka's attempt. After that little fiasco, the exams were over, and Naruka gave them all a lecture and told them to come back in two days for team assignments. Afterwards, all of the kids went home to celebrate with their families. Now, I can put forth the first phase of my plan. Naruto thought. It's about time, I've been getting bored. Kurama said with an evil smirk. Okay, we will now start with the team placements. Team 1 No one cares Team 7 is Sasuke Ichiha, Naruto Uzumaki, and Yukatora Hako. Your Jonin sensei would be Kakashi Hataki. At this, Naruto and Yukatora shared a smile while Sasuke scowled at being on a team with Naruto. He made is Hinata Hyuka, Kiba Inuzuka, and Shino Aburami. Your Jonin sensei is Kurana Yuki. Team 9 is still active, so Team 10 is Shikamaru Nara, Chaji Akamichi, and Ino Yamanaka. Your sensei is Asuma Siratobi. Thank you all for allowing me to teach you, and I hope you all have very plentiful career in the shinobi arts. Please wait here for your jonin sensei. With that, Hiruka bowed and walked out of the classroom. A few minutes passed before the first couple of senseis appeared to take their genin teams. After a while, only team 7 was left to wait for Kakashi. Minus one hour later. That's it, I'm leaving. Wanna come with Miyuki-chan? Naruto asked when he got to the door. Sure, no reason to stay here and do nothing. Their only female teammate agreed. Sasuke, if you stay, tell him we're at training ground 7. With that Naruto grabbed Yuki's waist and used a shunshin to leave with her in tow, leaving Sasuke with a scowl on his face as he waited for their sensei. You know where they went. Okay, now, I am going to train if you want to join me. Naruto offered. Sure, what training did you have in mind? Yuki asked. Well, you wouldn't be able to do my training, but I could give you a few exercises to practice. Naruto explained. Sure, that would be great. What did you have in mind? Yuki inquired. Here, this scroll has a few chakra control exercises. Now, what are your elemental affinities? Naruto asked as he handed her a scroll. I have no idea, I've never gotten tested. Yuki said as she skimmed over the scroll for now. Well here, this paper will show your affinities. Just push your chakra into it. Naruto explained as he pulled out a paper. Naruto watched as she pushed her chakra through the paper and how it split into three separate pieces. The pieces burned to ash, split into tiny pieces, and crumble into a small bowl respectively. 
Well that surprised him, what really surprised him was that the three pieces rejoined to create a ball of pure plasma. Hmm, I see. You've got three elemental affinities that join together to form plasma release Keke Toda. That makes sense as the plasma release is a known bloodline in Iowa. I promise, we will grab some scrolls on the plasma release if we ever travel near Iowa. Naruto promised. Thank you, that really means a lot to me. Yuki said, tearing up a little. No problem, now, here are some scrolls containing a couple jutsu for each of your affinities, as well as exercises to practice with your elemental manipulation. Naruto said. Right, I'll get right on it. Yuki said with determination. Minus one hour thirty minutes later, Academy. Yo, wait where are your teammates? That was the sound of a hypocritical cyclops walking into the classroom where the genin hopefuls had just graduated. The scene he walked in on was not one he was expecting, but one he would never forget. Sasuke was snoring loudly while leaning back in his chair. The sound of the door opening and his sensei's voice was enough to rouse Sasuke from his slumber as he fell back in his chair. Quickly getting back up, Sasuke looked around the room to see Kakashi standing at the door, chuckling at what he was seeing. You will tell no one of what you just saw. Sasuke demanded, trying to look intimidating. Aha, sure. Now, where's your new teammates? Kakashi asked lazily. They got tired of waiting for you so they went to train at training ground 7. Sasuke said with a huff. Cool, that's where we were going anyway. Kakashi then grabbed his shoulder and used a shunshun to get there quickly. Training ground 7. What the two squad mates saw next would have them questioning their sanity. All around the field were hundreds of Naruto's training with various abilities they were not able to recognize. Although, not even a second after they appeared, all of the clones dispelled, sending what they've learned back to the original. It's about time. Geez, what kind of shinobi is over two hours late to meet his team? They looked up to see Naruto standing on the underside of a branch using chakra to stick to it. Ah, Naruto. You know you weren't supposed to leave the classroom. Kakashi said as Naruto dropped from the branch and Yuki came over to them, looking a little disheveled. Yes, and you know you were supposed to be there on time. I guess we both have stuff to learn. Naruto spoke with an uninterested look on his face. Kakashi just barely kept the scowl from his face, but Naruto caught it. Well, let's just hope you two didn't tire yourselves out too much, because we have a test to do. You all will have to get these two bells from me by 2 p.m. Any who fail to do so will be sent back to the academy. And since there are only two bells one of you will already be sent back. You will have to come at me with the intent to kill. Are you ready? Kakashi explained. Hold up Naruto said before putting his hand on Yuki's shoulder, instantly replenishing her chakra reserves. Okay, now we're ready. Okay, now, sta before he could finish, Naruto stopped time to switch out the bells with shadow clones hinged as bells. After he walked back to his spot he started time again. RT. With that, the group of three split up to hide in the woods. Naruto, seeing no reason to hide, jumped back out just after Kakashi brought out his orange book. Not going to hide, I see. You think you have what it takes to fight with me. Kakashi said with a beepy smirk on his face, though no one could see it due to his mask. Oh, it won't be a fight. But I would love to have a dance with you, dog breath. Naruto smirked, seeing as how his old nickname for Inu back when he was in Anbu caused Kakashi to clench his fists. You know, people die in the field of a shinobi. I would hate to see you die while under my care. Kakashi said with a glint in his eye. Like you could kill me even if you uncovered your stolen Sharingan. How does it feel to be a thief of a thief? Naruto asked with a smirk. That's it brat, let's fight. Kakashi said, with murder in his eye. With that, the two opponents charged at each other. They started with simple to just to. After a couple of minutes of no one hitting anything, they decided to take it up a notch. To anyone looking in, they would have just seen a bunch of blurs occasionally clashing, exchanging a couple of blows, before taking off again. Deciding to end this, Kakashi started to preform hand signs to form a toned-down version of his signature technique, the Rikiri, which he dubbed the Chidori. While he was charging his attack up, he failed to notice Naruto's eyes change quickly, before changing back to his normal blue with silver specks. I see, you're using a variant of your only original jutsu, the Rikiri. At least you're getting a bit more serious. Naruto said, before forming a ball of wind in his hand before it took the shape of a drill bit around his hand. You say that it's supposed to be an assassination technique. What a joke. It's way too loud and flashy for it to go unnoticed. Shut up brat, sneaky and stealthy is more for Anbu these days. The strength of a shinobi nowadays lies in the strength of their teammates and the amount of jutsu they have at their disposal. Kakashi yelled, losing focus as his only original jutsu was just so blatantly called out. The first one is truthful. But the second is a complete lie. It doesn't matter how many jutsu you have if you haven't mastered any of them. Then you're just a sitting duck for someone who has mastered all of the jutsu in their arsenal. 
Naruto explained in a sage-like manner. Now, let's see whose assassination technique is stronger, your Chidori or my wind drill. Fine, no other jutsu except for these. First one to give out loses. Kakashi said beepily, thinking he had the advantage. Gotta go. And with that, both shinobi rushed at each other before thrusting their arms towards each other, one with a beepy smirk on his face, the other with a bored one. As soon as their jutsu met, it was clear whose was superior. Naruto's wind drill tore straight through Kakashi's yadori and cut up his arm before puncturing his right shoulder. In your rage, you neglectfully failed to recall that in the circle of elements, wind trumps lightning. That was your first mistake. Your second mistake was thinking that just because you're older, that you are automatically superior. Now, another Naruto appeared without smoke and picked Kakashi up. This clone will take you to the hospital. I take it we passed. You thought wrong. The object of the test was to see if you three could work as a team. And you didn't even get the bells. Kakashi said as he held up the bells with his good hand before they went up in smoke. Wow. Yeah, about that. I actually did get them. Now, would my two teammates please come into the field? Naruto said as he threw the two bells at his teammates when they showed themselves. There, and don't forget your orders from the civilian council to pass the Ichiha brat no matter what. Kakashi's eyes widened when Naruto just uncovered his plan with the civilian council. What he thought Naruto didn't know was that Suratobi told Kakashi to pass this team no matter what, so that he could subtly influence Naruto with his Sharingan until he was completely loyal to Konoha and be as powerful as he can be. Instead of voicing this, Kakashi just smirked, watch yourself brat, you might get yourself killed in this field of work. But yeah, you all pass. We will start missions tomorrow, meet here at 8am. With that, the shadow clone took Kakashi to the hospital. Now, you two heard the man. Try and be here on time, unlike our esteemed sensei. Naruto said sarcastically. Dope. Naruto turned to see Sasuke with a beepy smirk on his face. As you can see, I've got the civilian council on my side. So, I suggest you do whatever I say or else. Now, I demand you give me all of your techniques and weapons and help me unlock my Sharingan, then I will think about letting you be my servant. Sasuke demanded, thinking he was about to get a whole lot stronger. No. You're not about to threaten me with something that can't do anything to me. As of today, we're shinobi, therefore, the civilian council can't touch me. Naruto said with a smirk. Sasuke seethed, knowing he was right. Whatever, once I get my Sharingan, I'll make you teach me those techniques. Sasuke finished with a smirk plastered on his face. Or, how about I make you be my servant with my Sharingan? Naruto said as his eyes changed to show his eternal Manjiku Sharingan. Sasuke immediately saw red, how the hell do you have my clan Sharingan? I'll kill you, you bastard. Sasuke then rushed at Naruto, intent on killing him for his treachery on his clan. What he didn't take into account was that he had just looked into an upgraded Sharingan like a total idiot. He then fell down mid-charge, forced to relive his clan's murder for a couple of minutes, but to him it was hours. After the massacre he was forced to watch as Naruto tucked his mother over and over again. What he didn't know was that that was actually a memory. The Kodo had insisted on thanking him for bringing her back, as well as a bit of her family that didn't deserve to die, as well as allowing Madara to stay alive, in order to find love and try and find out what Hashirama's fixation on this world was. Okay, now that that is out of the way, what do you want to do Yuki? Naruto asked as he turned to his other teammate after deactivating his Sharingan. Well, I haven't been around the village much since I was focused on my shinobi training. Maybe you could show me around, as well as get a bite to eat. Yuki asked nervously. Sure, that sounds great. Naruto said with a genuine smile. They then spent the rest of the day walking around the village, just laughing and having a great time. Yeah, I don't think I can keep doing this. Naruto said as he calmly handed in Tora, the fire daimyo's wife's cat, for what seemed like the hundredth time. Team 7 had been doing D-rank missions for a little over two months now, and it was complete bullshit. These weren't missions, these were menial chores that would be better suited for academy students. Wait, that's a perfect idea. Thought Naruto with a smirk. Okay, Team 7, another D-rank, I suppose. You have the choices between painting a fence, getting rid of some rodents that have been raiding a garden, or walking the Inuzuka dogs. Hiruzen listed off with a smile. Actually, I had an idea, Hokage-sama. Instead of giving D-ranks to already fully-fledged ninja, how about you have the academy students do the D-ranks, while Gen and do low C-rank to high C-rank? This would give academy students the chance to train a little more before becoming ninja. And it would give ninja actual missions to up their teamwork and skills. Naruto explained with a smirk. That's actually not a bad idea, Naruto-kun. Hiruzen said, but with a noticeable grimace for a split second. I'm full of great ideas. Now, I think we deserve a C rank, with the acceptance of Kakashi of course. 
Naruto said with a glance to Kakashi, who noticed his lack of sensei after his name, with an unnoticed scowl. Yeah, whatever. Kakashi said indifferently. Hiruzen had a visual look of annoyance at Kakashi's indifference. Of course, and I've got the perfect job. You will be escorting a bridge builder back to Wave Country, then protecting him until he finishes the bridge. Do you accept this mission? Hiruzen asked as he got done explaining the mission parameters. We do. Team 7, we meet the client in one hour, so go home and grab whatever you will need for a mission of two to three weeks. Dismissed. Kakashi told his team. Kakashi, please stay back a moment please. With a nod, Kakashi stayed back. Naruto hesitated before turning and walking out of the door with the rest of his team. Kakashi, what the hell are you doing? Hiruzen yelled after setting up privacy seal around the room. It's not my fault. He somehow knew that I was Inu from my Anbu days. When you assigned me to be his sensei in order to better control him, I didn't think it would be so hard. He even knows about our plan to control him with my Sharingan. Kakashi tried to reason with the aged Hokage. Then you'll just have to start influencing him ahead of schedule. You will just have to unlock Sasuke's Sharingan all that much faster so that we can put the next phase of our plan into action. Hiruzen said with a thoughtful look on his face. Kakashi nodded before he bowed and left. Neither noticing the small amount of smoke wafting up from the dark corner of the room. With Naruto. Naruto had just received the memories of his clone that he had hid in Suratobi's office. Needless to say, he was not happy. That old bastard thinks he can just waltz in and control him. Oh, it will be fun to see his face when he sees just how hopeless that plan is. Oh that would be priceless, for sure. Now get back to training. Kurama told Naruto, startling him into getting back to doing one finger push-ups, while his legs were straight in the air, and 300 pounds on each leg, and 500 on his torso. Ah, right. So, what exactly should I do? I've run through all of the techniques and exercises everyone left me. Naruto asked his tenant. Well, you could always spar with us. Naruto turned to see all of the people he brought back, and that decided to stay. From the left to right there was Kashina, Taka, Shiro, Makoto, Shisui, and Madara. Madara, I didn't know you were back in the village. And how did you get the Rinnegan? Naruto asked curiously while studying the powerful Dejutsu. Yeah, when I was traveling, I remembered that I had transplanted my original eyes into an Uzumaki boy by the name of Nagato. Apparently, he had placed a seal on them, kind of like the Hyuga, but this one completely blocked my ability to use the Rinnegan in this new body. So I just had to track him down and remove the seal. Madara explained. Cool, now. I heard you guys wanted to spar. Naruto asked with a smirk on his face. Why not, it will be a good way to determine how far you've grown. Madara said, mirroring Naruto's smirk, as did the rest of them. This'll be fun. Naruto said and with a snap of his fingers, he felt the all too familiar feeling of time stopping. Well, let's get started shall we? And with that, they were off like bullets. Half an hour later. Everyone other than Naruto was lying on the ground while panting. Geez Naruto, I mean, I know you were trained to be the strongest shinobi in existence, but I didn't think you would achieve that at the whopping age of 13. Madara said with a smirk. Well, I was trained by the best and don't forget all of the years in time stop. So I'm mentally older than 13. Also, I've got the most powerful biju, excluding the Juubi, inside of me. I was practically born for greatness. Now, another snap of the fingers later, time started again. I need to go leave on my first C-rank mission, so I'll see you guys later. Okay, have fun Naruto-kun. They all yelled in unison. Yay. Naruto yelled back as he used Shunshin to get to the north gate in record time. He finished his shunshin to find his team and one old guy who reeked of sake looking at him. What? Naruto said while cleaning his ear out with his pinky. You're ten minutes late and you have no equipment with you. I'm taking you off of this mission for insubordination. Kakashi said with a smirk. First of all, you're late to everything, and second Naruto said as he lifted up his arm to show seals all along his arm, I do have my equipment. But, what about armor, Naruto-kun? Yuki asked. I don't need it, and even if I was ever in the situation where I would need some, these clothes have seals all over them to make them more durable than even Anbu armor. Fine, you can come. But you're on thin ice, brat. Kakashi said with a huff before turning and jumping into the trees, quickly followed by Sasuke. Did they forget that we have a civilian client? Yuki asked Naruto. Yes, yes they did. Naruto said with a sigh and a face palm before walking towards the client. My name is Naruto Yuzumaki, nice to meet you. Naruto said with his hand outstretched. The name's Tazuna. You know your mission. Good, hopefully we'll get along better than the Ichiha brat. The newly named Tazuna explained before Naruto nodded. Well, he started before three shadow clones appeared. 
me, two of my clones, and Yuki-chan will form a diamond formation around you, while the other clone will follow us in the trees to keep an overhead watch out. Now, let's get going. Naruto said with a smile as they made a diamond formation around Tazuna. Minus one hour later. After an hour of walking, they came upon a quite hilarious sight. Kakashi and Sasuke were both in a sphere of water above a lake with a man, and what looked like a clone of the man with their hands in the spheres, to keep them up and functional. Sasuke also had noticeably red eyes with three Tamo, one in his left and two in his right. The man looked to be in his late twenties to early thirties, wearing black pants with blue sandals with ankle warmers attached, as well as a black shirt with blue arm warmers. He also had bandages over his neck and covering the lower half of his face with a blue headband with a slash through the Kiri symbol, showing that he was a missing nin. He also wielded a large sword attached to his back. Ah, I see somebody got into a little bit of trouble when he left his client behind. You know, I'm wondering, how did you get your jonin status? Did the Hokage just pity you so much that he just gave you the position? Naruto said with a smirk. Oh, shut up dope. Just get us out of here. Sasuke said, somewhat begrudgingly. Oh, I don't know. I'm just a dope, how could I defeat someone the great Sasuke-sama couldn't? I should just give up now. Naruto said, feigning submission. Oh, so now you admit it. Well better late than never. But you need to get us out of here, and we can discuss your servitude later. Sasuke said with a smirk. You really are stupid aren't you? Naruto said with a smirk at Sasuke's surprised face that Naruto didn't want to serve him. Now, who do we have here? By my deduction, I would say that you're Zabuza Mamachi, missing Nin of Kurigakur, as well as former member of the Seven Ninja Swordsmen of the Mist. What are you doing attacking my team? I was hired to kill the bridge builder. So, why don't you just hand him over so that I don't have to kill a newly minted genin? I don't need that on my conscience. Zabuza tried to reason with the kid. Yay, not gonna happen. See, this guy is kin to my charge, and it wouldn't look very good if my first mission out of the village is ended by my charge getting killed. So, instead, how about you give up and join me? Naruto asked with a raise of his eyebrow. How about a deal, Gaki? You beat me, I join you. I beat you, and I get to kill the bridge builder. If you put up a good enough fight, I let you and your team leave with only a few broken bones. Zabuza proposed with a smirk. Sure, any limitations? Naruto asked. Only Tai, Ken, and Ninjutsu. Everything other than that is prohibited. Zabuza said after a second of thinking. That's reasonable. Now, are you ready? Naruto said with a smirk as he got into his battle stance. Of course, don't get beepy kid. Zabuza said with a smirk as he grabbed his sword from his back and held it in from him. Trust me, I'm not beepy, just confident in my abilities. Naruto said with a smirk as he rushed towards his opponent. We'll see about that, kid. With nothing else left to discuss, the two ninja charged at each other with high jonin level speeds, only to come to an abrupt stop in the middle, with Zabuza swinging his sword with a horizontal slash. Naruto ducked under the slash before jumping up and Kangaroo kicking the missing nin in his chest, sending the ex Kiri nin rolling back before finding his balance and skidding to a stop on his feet. Then, with chakra augmented speed, Zabuza rushed at Naruto before he could land and sent an upward slash to try and cut his opponent in half. Emphasis on the word try. Naruto, seeing this move from a mile away, pushed a large amount of chakra through his foot so that as soon as it touched the ground, his foot blasted off the ground to spin him like a top in midair, narrowly missing the large sword before kicking Zabuza on the back of his head with such force that Zabuza's face met the ground in a very unpleasant way. Finally touching the ground, Naruto immediately rushed Zabuza and preformed an axe kick, forcing him even farther into the ground. This victory was short-lived as the Zabuza in the crater turned to water. Naruto then turned to see the real Zabuza standing on the lake, preforming hand seals. You really are impressive, kid. Let's see how you are with ninjutsu. Water style. Water dragon jutsu. Zabuza yelled before sending the water dragon towards the blonde kid that was his opponent. HMPH, pathetic. Naruto said as he appeared behind Zabuza with a silver flash, causing the ex-Kiri Nin to widen his eyes before being thrown forward towards the forest by what looked like one huge red tentacle with some black at the tip. Then, before anyone could blink, the tentacle seemed to uncurl to reveal nine smaller tentacles that curled around each other to perform a stronger, drill-like attack. They seemed to all be originating from the bottom of Naruto's back. Just think of Kaneki's Kagyun. Zabuza, when he was finally done flying through the trees, stopped when his back met a particularly sturdy tree to where he just sat there in pain. That is, until Naruto walked up to him and nudged him with his foot. Yo, so do you concede or what? Naruto asked nonchalantly. Yeah, yeah. Geez kid, you've got some serious firepower there. What was that last technique you used? Zabuza said as Naruto started to heal him. It's a bloodline called Kagyun. 
It's unique to every person who has it. Mine is called Rinkaku, well a friend of mine's is called Yukaku. Now, how do you want to go about this, we could have you go back to Gato and pretend to still work with him, or we could just go Rambo and destroy his base in a fiery explosion. Naruto said, a little giddy at the end. I'll act as a spy for now, so that way I can find his vault and take all the money that bastard owns. Wait, how did you know I work for Gato? Zabuza asked after a moment of thought. Ah, fine, I guess you could do that. Just gotta ruin my fun. And I know because I made the old man spill it when the demon brothers Gozu and Maizu attacked us. Naruto agreed, before retelling the not-so-exciting story. I mean really. Who hides in a puddle? I can't believe I lost to you. Well, you guys go on your way, I gotta go sell my story to Gato in order for him to trust me to get a little close to him, so you might not want to heal me up too good. Zabuza said before feeling the feeling of being healed go away. Suit yourself, but you might want to use your friend in the trees to help you look, she can also be used to stop anyone who comes near you while you're still recuperating with the help of her ice bloodline. Naruto said offhandedly while walking away to check on his team. What? How did he sense Haku and even tell her gender and Keke Genkai? He truly is powerful. Zabuza thought with wide eyes as he left with his left arm around what looked like a Kiri Hunter Nin, who appeared after Naruto had left. We have much to talk about Zabuza Sama. The Hunter Nin look alike said, which only got a sigh and a nod from Zabuza. But Naruto. Naruto returned to the edge of the lake to see Yuki using what little knowledge she had of healing techniques to try and heal Kakashi and Sasuke, though only Sasuke seemed to be awake. Also, his clones were still surrounding Tazuna, who looked to be staring at where he and Zabuza disappeared into the woods with concern. Finally, after having walked halfway towards his team, the Achiha brat noticed him. Hey, dope. I demand you give me those techniques you used, as well as that Keke Genkai. Sasuke demanded with a growl. Even if I wanted to give it to you, it's not called a bloodline limit for mothing. I couldn't just give it to you. And anyway, is that any way to treat the person who saved your life? Naruto suggested with a smirk. Shut up. I would have won that fight had you not gotten in the way. I was about to use my Sharingan to put him into a game jutsu and have him let us go. Sasuke smirked at his well thought out plan. Okay, first of all, do you even know any game jutsu strong enough to hold a jonin? And before you say that your Sharingan would have made it more powerful, the Sharingan, well it does make a game jutsu stronger, it only adds to it based on the user's skill. If you're a jonin who specializes in game jutsu, the Sharingan would be very beneficial to you because it would make casting the game jutsu that you already know easier. Though, if you are a spoiled genin who only just graduated and even more recently just unlocked his Sharingan, it would be like trying to open a can with a stick. The intent's there, but you don't have the tools necessary to perform the task. Naruto explained sagely. Oh, shut up. Stop acting like you know everything. Like you would know more than I do about my own clan's Keke Genkai. If you think for a second that you're better than me just because you have the same eyes as Itachi Sasuke said the name with distaste. Then you've got something seriously wrong with your head. I am better than you just because my Sharingan is natural and from my family. You probably just stole those eyes from some dead person after the Achiha massacre. Sasuke panted, having finally let loose after so many years of keeping his emotions in check, sort of. Naruto leaned his head forward so that his hair shadowed his eyes before speaking in an ominous tone, if you ever imply that I would do something as heinous and vile as to desecrate a dead body again, I will rip out those eyes you're so proud of and feed them to the Inuzuka dogs. Now, go to sleep. Naruto finished with a chop to the back of the Sasuke's neck, effectively knocking him out. Are you okay, Naruto-kun? Yuki asked cautiously. Yeah, I'm fine. Let's just get to Zuna-san home before we run into any more trouble. Naruto said with a happy tone, as if he wasn't affected by Sasuke's words at all. And in fact, he wasn't. As if a brat like Sasuke could get him riled up. He just wanted to scare the little bastard. Okay, Tazuna, lead the way. Yuki said with a smile as Naruto's clones grabbed his other two teammates. Right. This way. Tazuna stuttered out, never in his life has he seen someone move so fast. And on they went, on their way to the master bridge builder's house, in an effort to free his country from the evil clutches of a power-hungry madman. With all of this and more surprises along the way, do you think our favorite blonde-haired bastard is scared? Hell no. This is boring. Naruto complained as he was being forced to be present to Kakashi tell his team about the tree-walking exercise. This is a very important exercise, it can be used to better your control over your chakra. That way, you won't expend as much chakra when preforming jutsu. Kakashi explained as if he was talking to a child. Yeah, I know. I already know this exercise, as well as the water walking, waterfall cutting, chakra constructs, and chakra augmentation as well as many more. Naruto retorted, rolling his eyes. 
That's impossible, some of those techniques were lost long ago. The only details we have of them are in the names of them, not the directions or even who came up with them. Kakashi said, thinking Naruto was just exaggerating. Naruto's only response was to create a chakra blade from the bottom of his forearm. Kakashi looked on with wide eyes as he watched Naruto disperse the chakra construct. Cough well, this exercise is done by concentrating chakra to your feet to stick yourself to the vertical surface. Kakashi explained, facing his other two students. Raising her hand, um, Kakashi-sensei, I already know the tree climbing exercise, too. Yukatora said. Oh, well, how about the water walking exercise? He asked, to which she shook her head no. Okay, well, I will get you started with that after I get Sasuke started with the tree climbing exercise. She nodded and saw that Sasuke scowled at the fact that he was the furthest behind in his team. Okay, well, I'm going to go and train myself. See ya. Naruto said before disappearing in a swirl of chakra. Naruto reappeared to see a wide clearing with a small river cutting through the left side of it. Naruto, cracking his knuckles, quickly made a bunch of shadow clones and had them do random tasks that his teachers had told him to do that would increase his strength even more. While his clones did all of their exercises, Naruto was training his inherited powers from Kurama, as well as the people he reincarnated. As of now, this was his standpoint on these powers. Rin Shiren Tensigen. Mastered all of the abilities of Rinnegan, All Pass, Eternal Manjekyo Sharingan, Tsukiyomi, Amaterasu, and Susanoo, and Tensigen, known powers are mastered. Chakra Mode and Golem. Chakra Chains. Mastered can expel an infinite amount of unbreakable chains from anywhere on his body. Rasengan. Mastered created a variant for every single element, as well as can create them of any size, from the tip of his fingertip to the size of a large asteroid. Duration. Mastered can teleport without the use of seals, as long as he can see or knows where he is going. Seals. Mastered can produce seals with just chakra as well as beepies any seal within seconds. Kagyun. Mastered can use all types of Kagyun as well as use their Kakuja without the need for cannibalism. Leech abilities. Mastered can use Soul Reaper powers, Kido and Zanpakuto, Hollow powers, and Quincy abilities. Alchemy. Mastered can use alchemy without the need of a transmutation circle, as well as has no need for the rules of equivalent exchange. Branch of Sin. Mastered can create solid objects out of his blood, as well as give someone else a branch of sin. So, those, as well as all of his other jutsu and techniques, made up his arsenal. Thinking back on his life, it really was crazy how much could have been different had Kurama not given him the opportunity he had. He could be a doofus wearing all orange with only a handful of jutsu in his arsenal, screaming about becoming the Hokage and spamming the same jutsu over and over again and forgiving every single person who wronged him. He immediately shuddered at that thought. That sounds like someone he would kick the crap out of and wouldn't feel bad about it. Anyway, it had been a week since his little tousle with Zabuza. Kakashi had taken this chance to teach his team and even then it's just chakra control. His sensei really is a lazy ass. Not that there is anything he could teach him anyway. He was actually glad that Kakashi was lazy, because if he wasn't, Naruto would have a bit of a harder time enacting his plan. Naruto started to run through the forest at high speeds. While he could just stop time and no one would be any the wiser, one thing he hated about that ability was the deafening silence. So, he would take this nice trip with time still flowing through, just listening to nature and his footfalls. It was beautiful and peaceful at the same time. Anyway, he was ecstatic when he heard that his first mission would be going to wave. It would mean that he could go to the one place he had wanted to go for a while now, much easier, as it was just across the sea. Before he knew it, Naruto was at the edge of land, looking over the expanse of blue to a landmass in the distance. That landmass was his destination, the place he couldn't wait to get to. Not wanting to waste any time, our blonde hero took off across the sea with a grin on his face. After a couple of minutes of running, Naruto had to maneuver around some whirlpools in order to get to his destination. After that, it was smooth sailing so to speak, and after another minute of running, he came to the shore to see a pathway under a large teal archway with a symbol resembling a circle with a spiral inside of it. Smiling, Naruto continued onward into the ancient ruins of Yuzushi Agakur, his rightful homeland. And everything in this place was his bloodline inheritance. And he was here to collect. He wasn't saying that everything was his entirely and that he would desecrate this place just to get what he wanted. No, he was just here to get a few scrolls, weapons and artifacts and be on his way. Hopefully, he could come back one day and rebuild this place and start up a civilization to honor his people. But for now, he would just get what he needed and be on his way, maybe leave a few special clones to fix up the buildings while he's gone. Well, he better start before it gets dark. 
Naruto had been walking around for about an hour, entering buildings, picking up anything of value, before spawning a few clones to clean the place up before moving on to the next building and repeating the process over and over again. He made sure to leave anything that seemed like family heirlooms or other things of sentimental value with their owners. He ended his track at what looked like the Kage office building. Shrugging, Naruto took the steps up to the top floor to see a large red ornate door with swirls all over it. Opening it, Naruto saw a big circular room with pictures of what he guessed was the previous Kage. There was also a large oak desk with papers and other desk objects that looked like they were just put there yesterday. Hmm, I wonder Naruto thought out loud as he bit his thumb and swiped his blood over the most recent picture, which had a regal-looking man with a broad chin and blood-red hair. He wore black samurai armor and a headband with an Uzumaki swirl on it. When Naruto swiped his blood, the picture shone with a bright light before disappearing to show a frame with a cubby with some scrolls and a sword in it. Naruto, deciding to see what the scroll said first, sat at the desk before opening it. What Naruto saw in the vault was an incredibly large cave, filled with nearly everything you could imagine from the basics like scrolls, weapons, and armor to the more unique items, such as what looked like a jar of black sand, beakers and tubes sitting everywhere, and large bright computer screens at the end of the cavern. Curious, Naruto walked towards the large computer screens, all the while trying to take in all he could about this room. He would need at least a day to see all of this stuff, up you know if shadow clones weren't a thing. Noticing he was getting closer to the screens, Naruto focused to see if he could make out what was on them. What he saw was an extremely detailed list that showed many people and a few details about that person, including home village, mission count, defining attributes, and Jinchuriki status. True to his observation, his picture was at the end of that list, along with his biju number and home village. Okay, why would someone have a list of every Jinchuriki? Naruto thought to himself. I have no idea, Kit. Karama replied, sounding just as focused as he was. Seeing that there was a back button, Naruto hurried to click it as to find out any other secrets this computer held. He was not disappointed when he saw many lists such as Akatsuki, Seven Ninja Swordsmen, Sanin, and finally the names of many hidden villages. Okay, so this person has obviously been researching different groups and villages. The question is why. Naruto asked to himself, about to click on the Akatsuki. I don't think that is any of your concern. A deep voice said from behind him. Looking up, Naruto turned around to see a man in a black cloak with red clouds decorating it. The man had dark orange hair with what looked like black rods piercing many parts of his body, but the one thing that surprised a blonde was not his blatant lack of a mirror, but it was his eyes. Irinigan. Naruto said with a sigh. For something that is supposed to be the rarest dejutsu in the world, it's coming up quite a bit lately. The man narrowed his eyes before speaking again, what are you talking about? Deciding not to answer with just words, Naruto activated the Rinnegan part of his dejutsu. The man widened his eyes at the sight of the very dejutsu that resided in his eyes. How do you have my eyes? The man demanded. Whoa, chill dude. They're not your eyes, I promise. Those are in your own head dummy. How else could you see me? Naruto said with an innocent laugh and a smile on his face. Stop acting childish. I know that you're more than you seem. I will ask you one more time. How do you have the Rinnegan? The man snarled. Oh, that's easy. It appeared in my eyes one day and gave me such wonderful abilities. Naruto said as if it was the most obvious thing in the world. Would you just cut the crap? Who are you and how did you get in here? Mr. Grumpy, as Naruto has taken to calling him, said, switching gears in the conversation. Oh, I'm Naruto Uzumaki, and I got here by walking down some stairs. Who are you? Because, to my knowledge, only an Uzumaki can get in here. Naruto said while well, grinning a childlike grin. This was his outside appearance, while well, on the inside he was talking with his tummy demon. Karama, who is this guy? How does he have the Rinnegan too? Naruto asked. I'm not sure on both accounts, Kit. Though what I can tell you is that those rods that are in his body are not just for show. They seem to be linking him to someone else, giving him chakra. He seems to be using that other person's chakra as his own. Karama replied while beepizing the newcomer. My name is Pain, and no door can deny me access. These eyes can see everything, even those puny seals that hid the entrance from me. Then all it took was a bit of chakra to open the door. The now named Pain explained with an emotionless expression. See, was that so hard? Now, I guess that makes you an Uzumaki too. Or whoever you're connected to is. Naruto asked a little more serious this time. Pain narrowed his eyes, how did you know I'm connected? Oh. It's pretty easy when you're an amazing sensor, such as me, you can tell pretty easily that you share chakra with many other people. Makes me think, if you're using someone else's chakra where's yours? And if you don't have any of your own chakra, are you considered dead? Naruto asked, gaining a smirk. You're too curious for your own good. 
It would be smart to kill you now, rather than let you go on to maybe spread this information. Payne said while lifting his arm with his palm facing the blonde. Ah, I wouldn't do that if I were you. You see, without your other bodies, you would be at a disadvantage. As opposed to me who doesn't need to use any corpses to utilize the full power of the Rinnegan. Surprised. Yeah, I know about your six paths of pain. Don't worry though, I won't tell anyone. I want to see what you do in the years to come. Though I will have to confiscate the items in this cave from you. Naruto said with a smirk. Payne narrowed his eyes before smirking and dropping his arm, you are an interesting one Naruto Uzumaki, but I'm afraid you will not be leaving here today. With that, the ground under Naruto burst open to show a beefy man with orange hair and black rods piercing his body, much like the first man. Naruto was then punched through the ceiling of the cavern into what looked like the village square. Groaning, Naruto stood up to see the six paths of pain, all standing in a line with a diva path in the middle with a smirk on his face. You thought you were so clever, thinking you could take on a god. In reality, you will only get squashed like the bug you are. You know the saying, two heads are better than one. Well, this is something like that. The diva path spoke before raising his arm once again and launching his jutsu at the blonde shinobi, Banshim Tenen, heavenly attraction of all creation. But that call, Naruto was swept off of his feet and pulled by an invisible force towards the orange-haired group. Rolling his eyes, when he got within seven feet of the group, Naruto used one his own jutsu, Shinra Tensei, almighty push. Suddenly, the paths of pain were all sent back by an unseen force. Did you really forget that I have the Rinnegan too? Geez, all of those heads and you're still dumb as a rock. Naruto chuckled. Doesn't matter, as all falls before God. Pain spoke before sending the other paths into action. The real fight started with the Asura path engaged the blonde by running up and, by turning his arm into a cannon, shot at Naruto with a beam of energy. Naruto, being the baddest that he is, dodged the blast swiftly before engaging the mechanical path. Naruto started with a few punches to the chest and stomach before moving on to jump and spin kick his opponent in the face, sending him across the field. This also happened within a second, which is probably why the path had no time to fight back. Narrowing his eyes, the diva path nodded towards the pre-top path before going back to beepizing the battle. Naruto smiled and chose to go along with Payne's plan by engaging the pre-top path who started to sprint at him. That didn't work last time, now did it? Naruto asked while shaking his head. As Naruto went to punch the second path in the face, his fist was grabbed in an iron-like grip. A fraction of a second later, Naruto noticed that this path was draining his chakra. Smirking, Naruto used his other hand to unsheathe Dane's leaf and quickly severed the offending limb from its body. The pre-top path jumped back in order for it to gain some distance between it and Naruto, but the aforementioned blonde wasn't having any of that. Naruto quickly followed the path and head-butted the path in the chin, causing the corpse to fly away. And you call yourself a god. This is merely a workout for me. Though not a very good one. Naruto said, while mumbling the last part. All the response he got was the diva path narrowing his eyes. Just then a poof of smoke was heard before Naruto turned to see another orange-haired path, this one female, standing atop a large two-headed dog. Ah, the animal path. Was wondering when you would bring this one out. Naruto said, barely suppressing a yawn. The animal path then silently commanded the dog to attack. Naruto, thinking quickly, jumped high enough to safely cover the bi-headed dog and, with a flip for flare, landed on its back. Naruto then ran towards the only female path before making a grab for its cloak. Before he could grab the cloak, the animal path jumped before landing on a pterodactyl as it took flight, high above the battlefield. As Naruto was looking at the prehistoric bird, the human path dashed at him from behind, trying to grab the blonde in order to tear his soul out. When the human path was just a few feet away, Naruto turned around with a smirk on his face as his eyes met those of the paths. The blonde genin grabbed the offending limb by the wrist and spun it around before bringing it down. Hard. The body slam, while meaning to harm the path, also caused the summoned dog to dispel. While Naruto and the path were free-falling, the animal path came in with the long extinct bird and swooped in to attack and claw at Naruto. Said blonde, not wanting to get turned into Swiss cheese, used his Shinra Tensei to expel the prehistoric bird and its summoner away from the blonde, as well as send the human path hurtling towards the ground at an even faster pace. As soon as his feet hit the ground, Naruto was forced to dodge a black rod that was shot from the hand of the diva path. Deciding to look at his last two opponents, Naruto turned to see all of the path standing in a line, excluding the human path that was lying under his boot. He caught the end of the Naraka path's jutsu, which revived the formerly defeated paths to brand new. I see, well aren't you just a party pooper? Well, I guess it's time to get serious. Naruto said with a smirk as he cracked his neck and knuckles. Seeing the diva path's unconvinced smirk, Naruto started to unleash his hold on his chakra, letting all of the chakra that he has been keeping concealed be felt. 
This caused his smirk to leave his face faster than even the Horatian as Naruto's base chakra was on par with that of the Sambi. Now that he didn't have to hold back, Naruto rushed the line of paths while forming a wind style. Rasen Shuriken. Narrowing his eyes, the diva path held up his hand once again and spoke the words, Banshin Tenen. In order to throw Naruto off balance and have him rocket towards the group. Smirking, Naruto shrunk the Rasen Shuriken to where it looked like he lost focus, and it dissipated. The diva path then summoned a black rod from Kami, knows where and used it to spear the offending blonde through the stomach. You really need to work on some strategies after this. With a shake of his head, Naruto burst into smoke, signaling that it was a shadow clone, but not before growing the Rasen Shuriken back to normal size and dropping it onto the ground. Having come into contact with something with enough mass to cause it to detonate, Aka the ground, the S-rank jutsu rapidly expanded, catching a few of the paths in the blast radius, effectively disintegrating him. These paths included the diva, Naraka, animal, and human paths. Well, there goes your most powerful and important paths, the diva and Naraka respectfully. That's gotta be a big loss on your end. Are you sure you want to continue? Naruto asked with a confident smirk. His only answer was the Preta and Asura paths rushing towards him with anger written all over their faces. With a sigh, Naruto took off his shirt, eliciting a confused look from the paths, who stopped in caution and curiosity, before sealing it away in a storage seal on his side. Bending forward a bit, Naruto's muscles tensed before a pair of red and black flames erupted from his shoulder blades. Taking a moment to focus on the flames, the paths noticed that they sort of looked like wings. Seeing their confused faces, Naruto smirked before tensing again, which caused the flames to harden like crystal to form what looked like angel wings, detailed down to the very last feather. This is part of my bloodline, called Yukaku or Shining Feather, one of my favorite out of the four for its beauty and precision. Something you will be able to witness in a moment. Naruto spoke, after admiring his wings for a moment and smiling as he remembered how he acquired them. Flashback. During training with Kaneki and Taka. Here we have a younger Naruto standing before two people, a man and woman, who each wore some unique clothing. At least unique in the elemental nations. The first, a man with snow-white hair, wore a short-sleeved black skin-tight shirt, think under armor, that showed off his lean, but muscular, physique. He also wore black cargo pants with a brown belt holding them tight to his waist. To finish off the look, Kaneki wore black and dark blue tennis shoes. The second, a woman with dark blue hair that covered one of her eyes, wore a white button-up shirt underneath a blue zip-up jacket. She also wore blue jeans and some white and blue flat-bottom shoes. Think converse or along those lines. So, how do you plan on acquiring our powers for us to teach you? Kaneki asked the blonde child. Oh, that's easy. All I have to do is touch where your Kagyun is located and focus a bit of chakra into the spot, before forming my own Kakyuhu, the Kagyun gland, with chakra. It's harder than it sounds, but Kurama will assist me until I can do it on my own. Naruto explained with a grin. Uh, okay. Well, mine is in my lower back so here you go. Kaneki said after lifting his shirt up a bit and turning around. Thank you. Naruto said after a few moments with his palm pressed against Kaneki's lower back. Wow, you would think it would have hurt a bit. Kaneki said after feeling his lower back to see if anything changed. Nope, just a simple scan. Think of me as a copier that has just scanned your Kagyun and is printing it right now in my body. Naruto said and, after taking a minute to meditate and form the Kakyuhu, turned to Taka. Your turn, if you don't mind, of course. Uh, yeah. Mine's on my shoulder blades. Taka said, looking uneasy before grabbing the hem of her shirt. Oh, you don't need to do that. I can just reach under your shirt if it makes you feel better. Naruto rushed after seeing her discomfort. Oh, yeah, that would probably be best. Just no funny business. She said with a slight blush of embarrassment. Of course not, wouldn't dream of it. Naruto smirked before moving behind Taka and slid his hands just underneath the hem of her shirt. Naruto, having an idea, slowly moved his hands up her back, making sure to drag his fingers lightly against her flawless skin. Naruto could just make out an increase in her breaths and her slightly relaxed slouch. Smirking, he continued his journey up to her shoulder blades. Unfortunately, he reached his destination faster than he thought he would. He then placed his palms against her shoulder blades and started his scan. Sensing something off in her right wing, Naruto focused on her right shoulder blade, dismissing the left one for now as he didn't sense anything wrong with it. Gasping, Naruto stopped his scan and opened his eyes. What? What's wrong? She asked, hoping he hadn't seen what her brother did to her all those years ago. What happened to you? Who did this? Naruto asked in concern. Psy it was a long time ago, and with that she went on to tell Naruto the story of how her brother beat her down before feasting on her wing. Kaneki looked down at that as he remembered the beating he gave Ayato afterwards. Would you like me to heal it? Naruto said after getting his anger under control. 
A brother was supposed to protect his siblings, not beat them down. Bah, you can fix it. Taka asked in surprise, also getting a surprised look from Kaneki. Yeah, it would be a bit painful, but I should be able to relatively quickly. Naruto said, after getting quick confirmation from Kurama. Yay, yes. Please. Taka pleaded in a very untaka-like way. Please lay on your stomach while I get started. Naruto said, relaying what Kurama was telling him. Following his directions, Naruto started rubbing his hands together while charging chakra into his palms. When he got into a steady rhythm, the blonde started adding a bit of Kurama's chakra into the mix, until it was perfectly balanced between regular chakra and biju chakra. After he was done, Naruto gently placed his hands on Taka's right shoulder blade, the biju chakra causing Taka to hiss a little. Now was the hard part, Naruto would have to perfectly channel the chakra mixture into the damage and forcefully regrow the wing by causing the RC cells to rapidly reproduce and form it into an exact replica of the left wing. Closing his eyes and taking a deep breath, Naruto slowly started this process. Time skip. It took about half an hour before he was done. He would have been done it faster if he didn't have to make sure that the RC cells were reproducing and staying intact and prevent any dangerous mutations from occurring. He also couldn't freeze time as that also froze the bodily processes, hence why he didn't age from all of those years training, and why he didn't need to stop training to eat or drink, though he did out of habit. But the sigh, Naruto lifted his hands from her back and slid them out from under her shirt. Seeing that his patient was unconscious, Naruto stood and picked Taka up bridal style, before moving her over to where he had instructed Kaneki to set up a pseudo bed for her to rest on. After setting her down, Naruto turned to Kaneki, who had a look of worry on his face. Don't worry, she will be fine. She just needs rest, though she should wake up in an hour or two. How about we start training as a way to take your mind off of it, as well as make time pass faster? Sure, and Naruto seeing that he had his attention, he continued, thank you. This really means a lot to her. Smiling, Naruto responded, it's nothing, just trying to help out a friend. With that, the two began to train vigorously for the next hour and a half. Time skip. Aka woke up to hear what sounded like two people fighting. Curiously, she turned her head to see Naruto and Kaneki fighting, both using what looked like red and black tentacles that protruded from their lower back. Assuming the worst, Taka rushed up and yelled out to the two, what the hell is going on here? This interruption effectively stopped the two in their tracks, and not a moment too soon as a tentacle from both of them were about an inch from piercing the other's body. Oh, Taka-chan, you're up. I figured you would be out for at least another half hour before you got up. How are you feeling? Naruto said, retracting his kagyun back into his lower back. What the hell do you mean how am I feeling? Why were you guys fighting about? Taka asked in disbelief that they could just nonchalantly blow off their fight at the drop of a hat. Oh, we were just sparring, you know, just trying to get him used to using his kagyun in a fight. Kaneki said sheepishly. Yeah, but more importantly, how are you? Try and bring out your kagyun to show us if it reformed correctly. Naruto said, anticipating the show. Oh, right. Well, let's give this a try. She said before tensing her muscles and bending forward a bit before her wings burst forth from her back, looking like liquid crystals. What she was ecstatic about was that there were two of them. Finally, she felt complete again. Well, take them for a test run. Naruto suggested, smiling at seeing how happy Taka was. With a nod, Taka started to run forward before launching crystals at a tree from both wings, shredding the tree into pieces. Seeing her results, she continued to run around launching crystals at various objects in the clearing. Looking good. Naruto yelled to the ecstatic ghoul as Kaneki wooed her on from the sidelines. After a couple of minutes, a panting, though with a smile on her face, Taka returned to the two males and immediately hugged Naruto tightly. Okay I'm ready now. Taka said from Naruto's shirt. Then flashback. These wings were a gift from a dear friend of mine, so try not to bleed too much on them. Naruto said as he vanished in a burst of speed that even the Rinnegan couldn't track. In the next moment, the Asura path had multiple wounds all along his body. These wounds ranged from shallow cuts to full-on missing limbs. Appearing on the other side of the path, Naruto skid to a stop, spinning to rid his wings of his blood. Seeing that he wasn't getting back up, Naruto quickly fired a crystal feather from his left wing that embedded itself into his skull, effectively returning him back into a corpse. Now, with only one left, Naruto tensed and changed the form of his wings back into what looked like wild flames. You are all alone, Prita. I gave you all the chance to leave with your lives, but Nu, you just had to take my mercy and spit it in my face. Well, you had your chance. Having said his bit, Naruto got up close and spun around the shocked body, effectively setting the last path ablaze in a sea of red and black flames. As Naruto watched the pre-top path try to absorb the flames, he realized that there was no chakra in them, a little too late, but it was a good effort. 
Deciding that he's had enough, Naruto clenched his right hand into a fist, which had the effect of solidifying the flames around the corpse. He then clenched his right hand into a fist, causing the crystal to break apart into several small pieces. Looking around, Naruto quickly changed his eyes to his Manjekyo Sharingan and used a Matarasu to burn the body and crystal pieces to ashes. On his way out of the square, Naruto noticed the black rod that the diva path used to spear his shadow clone through the stomach. Taking it into his hand, Naruto closed his eyes as he channeled chakra into the rod, effectively pinpointing where the original is. Pain, you better have some damn good bodyguards because I'm coming for you, and I better get a better workout than this little spat. Naruto said as he twirled around to return to the cave to take anything that he finds useful. After going through all of the files on the computer as well as the inventory of the cave, our favorite blonde hero only took one thing he found with him. He actually found it in a chest that was secure with the most highly complicated seals, as well as chains that seemed to be made of chakra and was being powered by a self-regulating source of chakra that was coming from underneath the island. So, after making sure the chakra source wasn't powering anything else important, which it wasn't, making Naruto's interest in the chest reach its peak to know that all of that chakra was only being used to power the security to the chains, he went ahead and drained the chakra source dry before unlocking the seals. What was inside however, was quite disappointing. All that was inside was a white kitsune mask with red fillings for the ears, a red curved line for the mouth, and red ovals around the eye holes, as well as around a black circle on the forehead, Menma's mask from Road to Ninja, and a piece of paper that probably explained the contents of the chest. Opening the paper first, Naruto saw that his assumptions were correct. Dear reader. If you are reading this then you have been chosen by the Yuzuka Gate to be then next to wield these legendary items. Use these items well and bring terror to those who oppose you, as well as bring calm to your loved ones grow strong and bring Yuzugaku back to its full glory. The only item within this chest, the Tenko Fox Mask, has been in this chest since the very first Yuzumaki. This mask has the ability to let all who look through it to see into another life. The reason this is locked away is because all who look through this mask are given whatever other life they witnesses power. The only downside is that the wearer is not able to choose the life they view. This mask can only be used once per person. Now, this letter also has instructions on how to preform one of our signature jutsu. The instructions are within a seal on the back of this paper. Use this item and jutsu to fulfill your every desire and grow strong. We do not care what you do with your new power, as we have lost any and all allies we had, which I admit was only Kanahagakur and Sunagakur, when Kano had decided not to send any reinforcements. Though, please spare Sunagakur as they were actively helping us, though they could not at this time due to being held back by a group of soldiers tasked with keeping us without any help, and we are all good friends with the third Kazikage. Goodbye, I wish you good luck in your ventures. With love, Asuka Yuzumaki. Naruto, choosing to save the jutsu for later, sealed it into a seal on his wrist before fixing the sealing with a minor earth jutsu. Not wanting to wait any longer, Naruto placed a mask onto his face and looked through the eye holes, only to be immediately bombarded with memories that weren't his own. Memories of someone who looked like him, named Menma Yuzumaki, living his life before, near the age of 16, he left his Konoha and started capturing people with special abilities. Menma was able to release his version of Karama in his full form, as well as his nine masked beasts, as well as coming up with his version of a Rasengan called the Spiraling Ring, which was much stronger than a normal Rasengan. He saw how Menma eventually claimed that world as his own and ruled as a ruthless tyrant over the people who rebelled and a powerful monarch to those who were content. How he even combined the Biju into one, creating the Juubi once again and making him its Jinchuriki. What made him mad was that, while their relationship wasn't as good as Naruto's and Kurama's was, Menma completely betrayed his version of Kurama and took away the only thing that truly embodies the concept of living. A consciousness. He stripped his Kurama and the other Biju of their consciousness before morphing them into the Juubi. After organizing the techniques and discarding any memories he didn't need or want, Naruto opened his eyes to see the mask in his hand, slightly pulled away from his face. Relaxing his frame for a second, he concluded that only about a minute has passed. Do you see all that Karama? Naruto asked his tenant. Yeah, strange to think of a world where I wasn't a god and could be dominated so easily by a normal human. Granted, that human had great techniques, but it wouldn't have any effect on me personally. And to think that he took away my consciousness after all I'd done for him. Karama gave his two cents while playing some of the memories back in his mind. Yeah, strange is one way to put it. Anyway, let's leave already. I've still got a mission to complete. He said before sealing the mask into his wrist seal. Naruto left the cave with a smile on his face. Not only did he gain some more power, he also got some information on this pain person and also got some information from their computer system. 
As he walked back through the village, Naruto created more clones to fix up the town square and some of the other buildings. He then left through the same gate that he came into before water running back to the mainland. It took a couple of hours of casual running, but he eventually made his way back to Tazuna's house. When he arrived, he saw that there were sword slashes across trees and even a boar. Speeding up now, he saw a couple of thugs dragging Tsunami out of her house, before Inari ran out of the house, yelling at the thugs to let his mother go. Seeing this, one thug ran at the child ready to cut the brat up. Naruto, seeing as the thug wasn't aware of anyone else around, created a clone to take down the one holding Tsunami, while the original intercepted the one charging Inari. You're gonna die brat. The thug said, completely confident that the kid would be dead in a couple of seconds. I don't think so. A voice said from his side. He looked to his right to see a fist coming straight at his face. Seeing as the threat was out of the way for now, Naruto turned to Inari and said, Good job, kid. You did good work, distracting that thug. It gave me the chance to save your mother and you. Now of course, it was a small eye as he could have just stopped time or used his incredible speed to incapacitate them, but the kid was brave, and that was worth the praise. Naruto thank you. He said as he cried lightly. It's okay to cry if you're happy. Now, I need to go to the bridge to make sure your grandfather is alright. Naruto said with a smile. Naruto heard a grunt from his left as he looked and saw the thug getting back up, albeit very slowly. Just as the thug finished getting up, he did the last thing any enemy of Naruto Uzumaki should do. He looked him in the eyes. And the only thing he saw was red before he curled up into the fetal position and rocked back and forth while murmuring something about a demonic mother-in-law. Seeing as how his job was done, he started running towards the direction of the bridge after leaving the clone there for protection. When he arrived, the side he came upon was one that he probably should have been expecting. There was his supposed team, minus Yuki, fighting Zabuza and Haku, while the workers were standing at the entrance to the bridge with Yuki guarding them. Apparently Kakashi thought he could take on Zabuza alone while leaving Sasuke to Haku. Clenching his hand into a fist at the blatant act of disrespect by his so-called team, again minus Yuki, Naruto walked ominously through the fog towards Zabuza's fight. Five minutes earlier. He couldn't believe this shit. First of all, he couldn't kill Gato and had to act all chummy with the tyrant. Secondly, he was being attacked by his ally. His ally's teammates after swearing on his word that he would be a spy. Maybe the worst thing about all of this would be that he doubted Naruto even knew about this betrayal. What the hell are you thinking? We are on the same side now, you dumbass. Or did you forget the little deal we made with Naruto? Zabuza said asked the deranged Jonin. Any deal that brat made is null and void as he has no power to make such deal. And do you really expect me to believe that an a rank missing nin, known for killing his entire graduating class, would respect any deal made with a lowly genin? Kakashi countered with a haughty smirk. I made that deal with my word on the line. I wouldn't dare break that deal, if only for the conservation of my reputation. Plus, I respect anyone that can beat me easily, especially if that person is as young as Naruto is and only a genin. You're a well-respected jonin and you're having trouble against me. What does that say to you? Zabuza said, taunting the jonin at the end. He got lucky and he was probably using his demonic chakra to best you. Kami knows very few can best a biju. Kakashi replied, letting loose that Naruto was a jinchuriki. No, he didn't use any of his biju's chakra or else we would have sensed the maliciousness in the air. He beat me fair and square, and as much as I loathe to admit, he is more powerful than both of us, maybe even combined. Zabuza said as he hid in the fog, trying to avoid injuring the jonin, lest he change the story to make it sound like the missing nin attacked first. That demon is only stronger because of his biju. And even then, the biju can be controlled with a simple shiringan. Just goes to show you that not even an almighty demon can stand the power of the shiringan. Kakashi smirked as he uncovered his stolen shiringan. You know, you were in Fasshold before, but now you've crossed the line. Assaulting my allies like that. You've just made a very big mistake. A voice said from behind him. Not getting a chance to turn around, Kakashi was suddenly sent flying forward into the side of the bridge before being embedded into the concrete. Thanks for the assist, Gaki. Didn't want to injure the prick just in case he tried to spin the story. Zabuza said with a sigh as he lifted the fog. No problem, now let's go deal with the Ichiha. Naruto said with a glare at the knocked out Jonin. Just then, the two shinobi felt a cold chill run across their skin, to which Zabuza gained a curious expression. I wonder why Haku would use that technique. Seems a bit overkill to use her Keke Genkai on a genin, even if he is in a chair. Zabuza thought out loud with a hum. What technique is she using? I can't have Sasuke dying just yet. I still need him for the Chunin exams. Though I could do it on my own, I doubt anyone with power would let me participate by myself. 
And while I don't particularly care for the rank or proving my worth to insects like the people in Kanoha, it would be funny to destroy Sasuke in the finals in front of all of his fan base. The asked, not picking up his pace in the slightest. It's called, Demonic Ice Mirrors. It allows Haku to transport herself through these crystal mirrors at near instantaneous speeds, while hurling Senban at her target. Against someone like Sasuke, it's lucky that she doesn't enjoy killing because he would be dead in an instant. Zab Yuza finished explaining as they came upon the fight. What they saw was pretty much what they expected, Sasuke, laying on the ground unconscious, looking like a human pin cushion, while Haku stood over him, looking as if she hadn't been touched. Did he at least give you a minor training session? Naruto asked with a smirk. Not even close. Even though he had the Sharingan, he lacked the speed required to put it to its full use. Haku's soft voice carried over to the two men. Yeah, he finds that the Sharingan is all he needs to win. Anyway, let's get these two tied up and then take them back to the house. We wouldn't want them to think that this little act of betrayal would go unpunished, would we? Naruto said, finishing with a small demonic smile that caused Haku to blush, though it was hidden by her foe hunter nin mask. Looky, looky man, the big bad demon has betrayed us. I guess this means that I won't have to pay you then. Said a voice from the other side of the bridge. A small group turned to see a short man with a business suit, cane, and sunglasses, leading what looked like a large group of thugs and mercenaries, all carrying what they thought looked intimidating. You must be the little shit named Gato. Wow, bringing all of these thugs for little Olami. I think I should feel flattered. Though, all I'm feeling is disappointment at the lack of skill your men exude. They look like you just picked them up off the side of the street, gave them some weapons, promised them money, and sent them on their merry way without giving a damn about if they could use said weapon. Naruto insulted with a bored expression. Why you little shit? Alright men, first one to bring me his head will double their pay. Anyone who brings me the women of this little group can have one of them, after I break them in first. Gato leered with a pompous stance. You just signed your death warrant bud. Well I'm sure the women of this group can handle themselves, you leering at them like a piece of meat is seriously pissing me off. So, how about a little deal? You sign over your money and rights to all of your companies to me and I won't kill you. Would I you say? Naruto asked with a smirk, knowing he wasn't going to take his deal. You must not know how to count, little boy. You don't stand a chance against this many thugs. You might be able to kill one-fourth of them all with help from your group, but you will soon be overrun. So no, I won't take your deal, as tempting as it was. Get em boys. The short little bastard smirked as his minions charged forward. Oh well, guess we'll just have to surrender and hope for a swift death. Naruto pretend conceded before a large sadistic smirk snaked its way across his face, as his eyes gained a small glint in them. Nah. I'll rip your boys to shreds with one move before slicing your head from your shoulders with a rusty spoon. While Naruto's group was smiling for most of that, they gained confused expressions at the random method of decapitation Naruto chose. Before they could question him on it however, they saw that he had already moved to where he was in between his group and the massive thugs. He then raised his hand before wind started to spiral in front of his palm, creating a dark purple orb, with what looked like planetary rings spinning around it, before coming to a stop as they all aligned themselves. I've wanted to try this one out since I saw it first used. Be glad I'm wasting even this much chakra on you, and thanks for being the guinea pigs for this. Spiraling ring. Naruto shouted with glee as he brought his arm back before launching it forward, releasing the jutsu towards the army. The thugs could do nothing as the orb of death sped towards them, slicing them apart with its rings, as it journeyed to the middle of the group. Once it had reached its destination, the ball exploded outward destroying everyone in its vicinity, stopping just after consuming the last of the thugs. Once the smoke cleared, Gato looked on in disbelief as he just witnessed his entire army of thugs get decimated with only one jutsu. Seeing the Bono monster walking towards him, Gato started to shake as he begged his feet to take him somewhere, anywhere that wasn't in the path of this demon. So, you want to make that deal now? Naruto said with a smirk. Yes. Please, I will do anything. Just let me live. Gato pleaded. Okay, sign here and I won't kill you. He said, holding out a piece of paper on a clipboard while pointing at a signature line at the bottom with a pen. Quickly grabbing the offered pen, Gato wrote his signature down as fast as possible before stepping back and sighing in relief. Smirking, Naruto grabbed Gato's shirt and lifted him up to his eye level. Why well, I thought you said you weren't going to kill me. Gato accused frantically. And I am a man of my word. Though I never said I would protect you if someone else were to kill you. And with that response, Naruto tossed the short bastard over his shoulder, right into the path of Zabuza's sword slash. Seeing as how that little squirt was dealt with, Naruto and Zabuza walked back to the group. On the way, Zabuza turned to Naruto to see him reading the contract. So, what are you gonna do with all that money and influence? The former member of the Seven Ninja Swordsmen asked. Nothing as it's not mine to use. 
Naruto replied, eliciting a confused look from Zabuza, before Naruto held the contract out towards the missing Nin. Why he asked as he read. Apparently Naruto had Gato sign all of his money and financial influence directly into an account under Zabuza's name. Yep, you now have all of your former employer's money and influence. What you do with it is none of my concern, but I do hope that you stay in my employment, even if you're not in the village. Naruto said as they reached Haku, Yuki, and Tazuna as the workers went home, being dismissed for the day. I do appreciate all you've done for me and Haku, so I would be happy to join you. Although, the decision is ultimately up to Haku. Zabuza said with a smile. What's up to me? Haku asked as she caught the end of that conversation. I was offering Zabuza here a job in my employment. You both would act as spies and travel around, gathering information and even allies if they come around. So, what do you say? He explained. I don't mind. But, if I may, why didn't you offer us asylum in Kanoha? I mean, we probably wouldn't take it as we've heard of the way they obsess over bloodline limits, but it still strikes me as odd. Haku asked, showing her intellect and deductive skills. Very astute of you, Haku-chan. To answer your question, I don't give a rat's fass about Kanoha. They are corrupted beyond belief and will do anything for power, and while they would have no real power over you as you would be under my protection, it is just easier this way. Also, I will send word to Kiri and tell them that you are no longer a missing nin. Naruto explained with a bored tone as he tied up Sasuke and Kakashi, before creating a clone to take them to Tazuna's house. Ah, I see. But yeah, I'm fine with this plan of action. It would be fun traveling the world, you know, while not being a fugitive. But you know, they're in the middle of a civil war right now. There's a division of power so I'm not sure who's going to get your message. Zabuza explained. Oh, that's true, the bloodline purges. I will deal with it. In the meantime, stay in wave and train your hardest, I will not be represented by weak people. Your reputation will only get you so far. I will also be leaving you a training schedule with some jutsu and techniques that will increase your power. The blonde genin said sagely. Yeah, I guess you're right. Thank you, Naruto-sama. Zabuza and Haku bowed in respect. No need for that, I was never one for honorifics. Naruto replied with a large smile. Oh, thank Kami. No offense, but calling someone so much younger than me Sama is just weird. Zabuza said with a shudder that caused everyone else to laugh. Well, Tazuna, let's get this bridge built. Naruto yelled enthusiastically. Yeah. Tazuna and the rest of the workers replied, mirroring his enthusiasm. But the abuse of shadow clones and an occasional time stop, the bridge was finished in record time. They decided to stay an extra night to party the next day, then leave that night back home. While this was happening, Kakashi and Sasuke had been under house arrest until they got back to Kanoha. This was done by Naruto placing chakra lock seals on both of them and forced them to do manual labor around the house for Tsunami, under the supervision of some Naruto clones. At the party. Naruto was walking around in his usual attire, seeing as how it was formal in itself, with a cup of coal in his left hand and his right in his pocket. He was about to walk around some more before someone tapped him on his shoulder. Turning around, Naruto was met with the sight of a small girl covered in rags, looking at him with a blush while twiddling her fingers. Um, sir I was wondering if you would maybe want to dance with me? She asked while looking down like she had done something wrong. Curious, Naruto looked around and saw a group of girls, about her age but with a bit nicer clothing, all pointing and laughing at the little girl. Smirking, Naruto turned back to the girl in front of him and held out his hand. It would be an honor. She looked up suddenly in surprise before smiling a megawatt smile and taking his outstretched hand. Looking over to the hired band, Naruto gave them a nod and motion to the girl. Understanding what he wanted, the lead guitarist motioned to his band members with a smile. As Naruto and the girl reached the dance floor, the band started playing a slow, romantic song. Naruto, positioning the girl onto his feet, started slowly dancing while holding the girl in a hug. The girl then looked over to where the group of girls were standing to see them looking on and jealously. Thinking quickly, the girl stuck her tongue out the group before going back to dancing with the hero of Wave. They spent the next couple of hours just dancing and talking. Naruto bought her all the food and clothes she wanted and even introduced her to Inari, who was speechless when he saw her, something Naruto took as teasing material. After the first couple of minutes, she officially introduced herself as Asano, not based off of anyone from any show, and she admitted that he was her idol, and that she wanted to be just like him someday. Someone who could instill hope in so many people with a smile never leaving their face. That made him smile. This is what he wanted with all of his heart. To be able to be someone people can look up to and be someone his parents could look up to. The day was ending fast as the sun was descending into the western horizon. 
When the party had ended and the citizens were all asleep, Team 7 left the village of Wave after Naruto disabled the chakra locking seals so they could travel at ninja speeds on a direct route back to Konoha. Naruto smiled, thinking of all of the friends he's made. Naruto, we need to talk. Kurama spoke in a serious tone. The end. So how was this part, I hope you like it. And if you like it share this part with your friends and like the video too. And don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily awesome fanfiction. Okay it's time for me to go. Bye bye.